So for people that don't really focus on vaccine manufacturing and distribution and development, let's go through this. Um, the, the polio vaccine that I got when I was a little boy, that came about through the invention and discovery of Dr. Salk and also Dr. Sabin, and basically took an inactive or inert or dead um, a virus from the polio and they injected it into you. That theory was if you inject a dead or inert part of the existing virus, you will get immunity. Is that the theory? Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So why don't you just do that with uh, COVID-19? Why doesn't everybody just go get some of that inert or inactive or dead uh, virus and inject it into people? Why is it so complicated? So some people are trying to do that. The challenge with this old technology is first, you have to do a lot of work to find the right dose I should give you. When you have an inactivated virus or life attenuated virus, it is not as strong. And so you have to do a lot of optimization to find how much do I give you. So I give you immunity, but I don't get you sick. And because so little is known about this new virus, it requires a lot of time to get all that work done. So it is possible to do it this way. Uh, it is uh, just super long. The other piece too is such technology is okay for healthy people. It doesn't work well for people that are immunocompromised, like people that have a cancer, or people that have a weaker immune system, like the elderly, which are a population at high risk. So you could do it with this technology. It will take you a long time, and you will not be able to give it to everybody. Okay, so with that technology, that the polio technology, the problem is that if you don't know what the right dosage is, you could hurt somebody, and also some people might be ill already and they might not get the right dosage, they could be ill. So that's why it might not be the best for this problem. Is that yes. right? All right. So I read that you were sitting in a beach in France and you read about this problem in China and all of a sudden you said, this is something I need to work on. Is that more or less fair or accurate? Yes. I was not on the beach because it was early January, but I was by the sea. Yes. Okay. So I was having breakfast. I was reading like every morning, the Wall Street Journal on my iPad. And I saw this article in the first days of January about this new respiratory disease in China. And because I've been working in infectious disease for 25 years, all my life, and because we have been partnering with NIAID, the division of NIH that Dr. Tony Fauci is leading, I basically sent an email to the NIAID team and say, do you know what this is? Is it even a bacteria or a virus? We didn't know at the time. And every day we learned more about it. And around January 10, the, the sequence of a new coronavirus was put online. And from that point on, we decided to just raise this virus and get it to the clinic with a vaccine against it.